Subscribe to Jeremy on YouTube. Hey! You're right, boys. I'm I'm back. Week week three. Is it three? No, it's week four. One week four now of the second year. And I was gonna vlog today, but I didn't because I thought I was well. Well, I watched Ant Man today. I was gonna vlog the experience, but I changed my mind after I watched the film and thought no this needs my thoughts need to be sat down talking to you because I've got a lot to say about this film I don't know why because it's not that good it's just like an average film it's not too good not too bad so I don't know why I've got so much to say but I just do because I was gonna I was gonna come out of the cinema and just film my initial reaction but I've got so much stuff to, to talk about so first of all the title they've had such a missed opportunity because Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. It's not a very good title, if you ask me. If they'd have just done it Quantumania, and then had in the title Ant-Man, because in, in the word Quantumania, directly in the middle, it says Ant-Man. So if they'd have wrote Quantumania, and then had Ant-Man in red, it'd have just looked so much nicer. And, and why would you want Wasp in the title? Because she's not in, she's barely in the film, and does nothing. So if you just say Ant Quantumania with Ant-Man in the title, it just looks so much nicer. Yeah, and then the wasp. Why? Why is every character, apart from Ant Man and Kang, interest? No one else is interested apart from them two. The wasp. You forget. I forgot halfway through the film that Ant Man and the wasp were together, like in a relationship. Because they just don't do anything. They literally separated. They could like. They're separated, they're stuck in the quantum realm. Ant-Man could think the Wasp is dead, and the Wasp could think Ant-Man is dead. And they didn't seem fussed at all. So, that summer, Janet Van Dyne is the most unlikable character in the film. And Modoc's in it. Modoc is not very good. Modoc is, is wacky. That's the, he's goofy. He's, he looks Spy Kids-esque. That's the only way I can describe it. And what a waste of Modoc. Modoc is so cool and you just they just they had him. It's just stupid. And also, I've got one small, small gripe with everything in the film. They just threw all the logic of the helmet out out the window. Because they want to show. I'm assuming it's probably quite hard for Paul Rudd and the other actors in the film to emote while they've got like the big Ant-Man helmet on which I guess is fair but I swear in the first Ant-Man and um, Ant-Man and the Wasp they had to have the mask on when they shrank because of like oxygen or something and if they took the mask off they meant they couldn't breathe or whatever Surely, I thought that was what the logic was what's the point of the helmet if not because in this film they just take the helmet off whenever they start talking. And it's so annoying. They just, because the suit is cool. The suits are cool. With like the, the, the snout thing. It just looks cool. But they just kept taking, they kept like taking it off. Like as soon as they start talking. Even when they're like small or even when they're like big. It just didn't make sense. And yeah, there's a few cool things. I've got, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be nice. Because Kang is cool. The middle half of the film is also cool. Bill Murray was cool, and then he's dead. Bill Murray had one scene. One scene. What a waste. Why? Why, Mar Marvel? Marvel, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, Marvel. You've disappointed me here. You have. You've drastically disappointed me here. Because this film could have been cool. But what annoys me with Marvel nowadays, they don't think about the film they're making. They think about what that, like when they made, they didn't make this film to be like, let's make a good Ant-Man film. They made this film to be like, okay, yeah, um, Kang is coming back. Kang's coming soon. No, no. I understand why they put Kang in the film because Ant-Man, does not have any good villains. So it's hard for him to, it's hard for you to find a villain for Ant-Man. 
So I understand why they wanted to put Kang into this to set up Thingy and Ant-Man had a big part of the time travel stuff. So it makes sense, but it was a it ruins part of the film. The whole quantum realm thing is just a bit stupid. It just doesn't work. I understand the law factor of having Kang being trapped in the quantum realm. But also I don't know. I just I think Kang should have just been brought up in Loki. And then that's all the build-up you need. Because bearing in mind, Thanos had very little build-up before Infinity War. And Thanos worked very well. But Kang having him in this and in Loki and then in Avengers Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, it's it's a bit too it might be a bit too much, it might be showing a bit too much. Because the after credit scene showed that there's inf uh, spoiler. The after credit scene showed that there's infinite versions of Kang. So I guess that's some. I guess that's their thing. Is gonna be like each thing's gonna have a different Kang in. But I think it's stupid that he gets defeated in this. They should have, as much as I like Paul Rudd, they should have killed him. Kang should have killed Ant Man, and then that would have set up him as like a big threat. Or Ant-Man should have still kind of lost because Ant-Man said I don't need to win, we both just need to lose and then he trapped himself in the quantum realm and then Kang got like it, it looked like Kang died but I feel like he definitely didn't because he just kind of shrunk a little bit more so he's probably just gone to another level of the quantum realm I don't know but Ant-Man should have stayed in there, should have stayed in the quantum realm but then like five seconds later the portal opens back up and Ant-Man can go back home. Why? Why? Why would you do that? If, also, it's just bottled the thing of like, oh, we're every third film in the trilogy, the hero has to lose something. Like in Iron Man, he lost all his, Iron Man 3, he lost all his suits. In Captain America, he lost his shield. Thor, he lost his hammer. So why didn't you make him lose his like freedom? Keep him in the quantum realm. And then have him come out in Avengers, be like, oh, um, Kang's coming. Oh, that would be, that would be sick. But no. Why? And also, the hu it's not a very funny film. As funny as Paul Rudd can be, it's not that funny of a film, personally. Because I didn't find myself, I found myself laughing whenever Modoc came on screen. And whenever he'd start speaking, because even the people in the film don't rate him. No offence, Modoc, mate, but no one rates you in the film. He, he dies, and the characters are joking while he's dead, and while he's, like, dying in front of them. And it's just, it's, you just don't like to see it, do you? It's just, it's just disappointing. But, you know how it is. Yeah. I just thought I'd do a little rant. I think, even though I've said all this bad stuff, I think that this film is not the worst Ant-Man film. Not the worst Marvel film, not the worst Ant-Man film. Ant-Man and the Wasp is a lot worse. Even though the Wasp was well used in that, more, well at least she was used better in that film. But, who knows? I think, I don't know, I can't, it's not even like a good setup film. Because it doesn't make me excited for Kang. It doesn't really, because it, all it showed is that Kang can be defeated by loads of wasps. Not wasps, loads of ants. And that's it. You hate to see it, but I just hope you enjoy today's video. That's all I see. I've been ranting for nine minutes. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe. I'll, I'll catch you later.